interested. Who makes it? Well, exactly. And that's why I challenged earlier on. The people, no, no, the people that are really making the decisions are companies with millions. They are BlackRock in the city of London. They are Lendlease in Australia. They are people, massive people with, uh, I mean, uh, uh, they have lots and lots of finance available to them. And in world uh, turbulent times, that, that money, international money, a lot of Chinese money, a lot of the money in the Far East, needs a safe home. That safe home in financial turbulent times is London. So that's why I talk about a land grab that's been going on on an unprecedented scale. It's been called back because of Brexit. But the decisions are made by the money makers. They're not. They're they're at the behest. Not the being made by those cabinet members. The, actually, exactly. They're making the exactly. decisions, but, but they're not. So, so so central central government has has starved local authorities of making um, their own building their own houses. However, they could. They could use their money that's uh, elsewhere and reinvest it back in the local economies. That's what we would be pushing for um, as as Greens, um, so that uh, you, you know, invest in your local people. And they have the legal powers to do that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm not sure about. That's where we need to explore. Let me. There was a voice here yes. in the pink yes. Yes. Could you give your name? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, please speak loudly because we're completely. Yeah, yeah. 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 My name is Zoe, I live in Kingston, and I live in social housing, which is the early type of housing you get if you're on the council list in, in Kingston. I've got friends who live in the Cambridge Road Estate. Is that on your list? Yes. Yeah. Is that a risk of demolition? Well, in, yeah, now they're talking about a special purpose vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good example of a place where yeah. the other wheels is above the place. Three or four people could make a lot of difference working with the tenants on the county slate. Yeah. I've got three more, so yes. I come from Croydon. You stand up, you can hear you. Okay, I come from Croydon, Sutton Croydon. Me? Me? Sutton And I was standing at a bus stop about two weeks ago. And where I live is Crystal Palace. And it's not a very interesting place, it's quite boring. The good thing about it, it's got a lot of green bits around, you know, areas three times the size of this room, which makes it fairly interesting. And the note from the bus stop said, very shortly the council's going to build homes on all of these green areas. And also in the centre of Croydon there's a lot of green areas, and apparently these notes are just about saying all these green areas are going to go. So if they get, it, if they get their own way, they go ahead with us. It's going to destroy the area. I mean, it's all, it seems to be all very arbitrary. Okay, that's another issue which takes us away from the issue of ballots and council homes. So I think we'll, because it's, it, it is regeneration, it's, um, it's council building new um, new homes, but it's, it's not, I think what we're talking here in this workshop about specifically is about council estates being um, being under attack from regeneration in these special purpose vehicles. I have Nick next, so then you, and then you, and then you. I just wanted to say, it's brilliant that you, you've got this judicial review. Usually what happens is they find a fault in the procedure, they go through the procedure again and don't change the policy. So it seems to me the real thing you've got to do is get public, public understanding and get public opinion behind us on this one and that in one sense is more important than the actual legal process. And I'm just wondering if that's part of the overall campaign. Okay, that's really, really, really interesting. Yes, we're getting it. Check reporting, page of the Guardian Monday, television news. Financial Times. Okay, I had you and I had you. Was it you and the stripey? Yeah. Yes, next. Um, well, I think what you were just saying, um, the legal, name? Uh, I'm sorry, if you think it's time for a central London, um, apropos of public understanding, to actually, you know, to, to make some kind of statement that we can put out somebody who, you know, yourself or somebody who who knows about these things, who's good at that sort of thing, to say why it's really important mm -hmm. that we keep council houses. So making the case. Making, you know, and, 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 and keep making 
say. You know, it, it would be good if someone is good at that sort of thing. Okay, okay. That's, that's great. I'm, we're in short for time. Um, no. There was Davis Wonsworth. Possibly another, I don't know if it's happening anywhere else, but another kind of threat to council housing. Uh, I live on a block, council owned, cooperative run, cooperative taken over by multi flat owners who don't live on the block, now trying to buy freehold from the council. This is privatisation of our block. And this is the New and York. How do we find this? Anybody else do that? That's happening too. Please let me know because this has okay. to be. That's another issue. Um, I, I'm, I'm from the Barnet and Catherine Frederick. I'm say the local, the local estate to me, um, Dollars Valley Way estate is on your list. There are another three in Barnet. Busy being sort of dead for the next generation of uh, social cleansing. <laughs> One thing I want, a point I wanted to make about sort of campaign side of it is that you go from selling off individual house to homes, right, and right to buy, then you start the thing you're saying about mass landlords buying things and they want to buy things, and then you get to like selling off all the states, not content with selling off individual flats, you're selling off all the states, and it's when it starts to thin it a little bit, and it's getting worse and worse, and soon we'll be selling off towns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be selling off the states, 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 Okay, um, over here, yes? yes. Uh, two points. A few months ago, Sean Derry organized an excellent public meeting in the council chamber in Camden Town Hall on exactly these issues, a detailed critique of Camden's so-called regeneration program. Most importantly, it was attended by all the main housing activists, many people in the Labour Party branches, who, the first time they were ever given a public platform, a high profile reported in the local press, and they were asked, why is the Labour Party doing this? And that's part of the overall process that's crucial for undermining the Labour Party leadership which is doing this in the name of public benefits, social housing, and so on. So perhaps that could be replicated in, in each borough. Find, if you're a Green Councillor, you can just do it. If you don't have a Green Councillor, you have to find some sympathetic councillor to sponsor it. The other point is about, I mean half-jokingly explain why gentrification you know, doesn't exactly describe what this is. I think we should just abandon that term because it gives the wrong impression. This is about wealthy individuals buying housing in which they will live. That's no longer happening very much. What's happening is, is land grabs. Right? It's, it's, an, it's, an it's a speculative investment, speculative destruction of housing in order to maximize the asset value. Councils, regardless of what party you are, are acting as in, in investment agents, right? They're acting as businesses, right? Invest, speculating on future land value. That's what we should attack. We should call it land grabs. We've, we've got five minutes left. I've got Mark, and then I've got you in the coloured shirt, and then someone else. Were you looking to speak? No, no, don't worry. Okay, it's, yeah, I'm going to bring Eileen back in. It's John. Uh, John Bain, John, Bain, sorry. Green Party. Yeah, uh, I think we need to be uh, to make clear that uh, regeneration in itself is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, some estates need do need to be regenerated. So oh, what, what do you mean by regenerated? Do you mean repaired? Well, yeah, indeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, they call it repaired. Yeah. I think yeah, call it indeed. repaired. Yeah. Because regenerated yeah. has is all yeah, the baggage yeah, yeah, in the yeah, salon. In, in, so in, use in, the term in, repaired. In, in, in. And so so, so what we need to do is, one, first of all, ask the residents who live there, do they want to be, yeah, their yeah, house to be repaired? And then if the answer is yes, then get them involved in how this uh, yeah, re repair work is, takes place. Yeah, this is what we need to be advocating. Okay, I think repairs, we will park because what we're talking about is the sell-off and I think we need to be really focused. Yeah, no, no, but, but We've got five minutes left. It's a really important issue, it's something I'm working on massively in Islington, but I think it's beyond the scope of this workshop. Okay, let's talk about the triple bottom line. And the triple bottom line, it's really easy for, like, my profession is as an architect, so I go in, 
so I show my client pretty pictures and I tell them more or less how much it's going to cost and they want the pretty picture. So I see developers going into councils and persuading the councillors, okay, we're going to solve all your problems, just give us a piece of land and we'll give you wonderful shiny new buildings, we'll solve all your problems, it won't even cost you anything, you just got to give us the land. Yeah. So the councillor thinks that's great, because yeah. it solves their economic problem. It totally destroys the community, it's not regenerating it, it's just building new buildings that are costing a fortune. And then it's also destroying um, materials which are really bad for the environment. Okay, well, we have a bit of a problem at the moment with upgrading existing buildings because obviously it's quite a bad idea to bolt blocks of polystyrene on tar blocks. But instead we can block up, uh, bolt on foam glass or rock wool or this other ways of bolting on high quality insulation to buildings that upgrades it and preserves the, the social infrastructure of the area. So somehow we have to get better at putting numbers on the other two lines of the, the triple bottom line. So you're very good at economic. Line, what are the three things? The, tri the triple bottom line that you talk about for sustainability is economic, social, and environmental. So we talk about saving the newts and all that kind of thing, and, but we're, we're actually not very good at our vocabulary at looking after communities yeah. and yeah. preserving communities. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic, that's very, very good. I'm, yes, I just think very quickly that one thing What's your name? I'm sorry, I'm Tracy from Southern Green Party. Um, something that we've seen in our area is the council playing off council tenants against each other when, um, by making them bid against each other for, for, for new homes. I mean, we see this at the moment on the Ledbury estate in Southwark, which I know is a very specific case because it's, there's a crisis there caused by the structure problems with the blocks. Um, but it's difficult for the people there to, to speak with one voice because the council keep basically dividing <laughs> and ruling. Yeah. 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 So we have to call out dividing and ruling where we see it. I'm going to bring Eileen back because we've got sort of like three minutes of this work, official workshop time left. Um, okay, so. I, mean, I think it's really good to begin this discussion, but it's, it's just touching on it inevitably. I think, and what we are aiming to do wherever we have any influence, is to take the wording that was agreed at Labour Party conference and that Jeremy Corbyn said, and to go in wherever. We will produce something that has that on, so it can be a not party politically owned campaign, but I think everybody should pile in with it, so that every council, every Labour <coughs> council certainly, is sweated and embarrassed about this. Do the you wording. agree? What was the wording? I had social cleansing. Yeah, but we're, it's on our website and I'll put it... So, social cleansing. Uh, yeah. uh, no, but the wording of what the ballot like, what was should be. Oh, yeah. right, you okay. You can circulate yeah. So basically, so at Labour Party Conference they agreed that ballots should be allowed. Yes. yes. So yeah. Required. Quiet. Required. Quiet. Binding. It says yeah. binding, yeah. binding ballot of tenants on of all, all residents. I think it actually yeah. says because oh. it's a bit so, of a wobble oh, about oh, it. Oh, that's yeah. so, now, so does that include um, private rental tenants on estates well, as well? Well, there's a discussion going on about this. Sadiq Khan and James Murray <coughs> think that's not possible, but our view is that everybody who lives there should get a vote on it. Yeah. So yeah. private yeah. renters, the leaseholders, the, yeah. the resident leaseholders. Yeah, that right. is. And the tenants, that there should be a vote of all those people about the future of the estate. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a lot of barging about this, but. Um, the second point I want to slow in as an area of opportunity is Kensington and Chelsea. Because Kensington and Chelsea is trying to scrap the current fake tenant management organisation without telling residents what's going on. They're bringing in people who have driven through the redevelopments in the town and the Olympic site. They're talking to some of the most avaricious housing associations like Notting Hill Housing and we fear that they are planning a large scale disposal of council housing in Kensington and Chelsea. Seems to me it doesn't matter if the Greens aren't in Kensington and Chelsea, but a campaign that linked up with Labour and the tenants and whoever else in the area to say this is not on and the, the people of Kensington.
Kensington and Chelsea are people who get a say on this. Anyway, I'm just throwing it out as a, as yep. a possible. Um, an important point from our point of view, which I'm just going to put out for you to consider, the reason why it's important that we identify where the pressure really comes from, the developers, the speculators, the investors, be they overseas or in Chelsea, is because that's the only way to avoid the divide and rule game being played on the game. And alongside that, you know, Leaseholders are sometimes annoying on the state, I'll just say that as a, you know, because it's true. But they are not the cause of our problem. Um, and neither are migrants, and neither are people who were born in a different country. And I think we need to be saying that as part of every housing campaign. We need to say it's not the migrants, it's not true that migrants have taken all the houses. There's 25 million empty bedrooms, according to. Jonathan, the cause of this is housing speculation, so I'm just inviting you to yeah, make that part of your thing. <laughs> and my the final point from us, we, so Defend Capital Housing is part of a wider alliance which came together to resist the housing bill, now Housing Act of 2016, and we've we linked up with private lenders and housing associations and tenants. Some people in this meeting were a part of that campaign and um, we're now widening that into a campaign called Homes for All, that's why I've got material and a sign-up sheet if your local group wants to connect. Um, we have agreed that on the 22nd of November we will be at Olympia where yet another one of these homes conferences where councils are invited to buy and sell land with developers and housing associations. We're going to have a protest there on the 22nd of November from 8.30. We're then going to be at Parliament Square to launch an alternative um, hour autumn statement for homes. And again, um, this is an invitation that we could all what link up to that. 22nd of November. And also the 22nd, same yes, day. And then there'll be a meeting in in Parliament. Um, what time are you doing in Parliament Square? Do you know? From 12. So this evening for that? No, uh, no. That's 25th. Yeah, and then on the 25th, which is the key thing, there is a housing summit. It's a national housing summit, um, uh, which will bring together different housing campaigners, different groups, and in an attempt to create the kind of grassroots housing movement that we need. We're going to seize this moment when governments we and the pressure on housing is at its greatest <coughs> to actually drive through housing change. And I think as local groups linking up with local campaigns or as the Green Party actually and locally, I think you have a key part to play in all of those things. Which is the leaflet that tells us about the 22nd? It probably doesn't exist yet because we've only just been reading it. But if you can make sure some of you are on this, oh, is it on yeah. there? Then Will this be emailed to us as well as the thing about the yeah. yeah. if the herring is yes. so that we all will put yeah. it on to our So if you, put, if you put a detail on this sign up sheet, then you will get that information in the next day. And I think um, if you're able to send it to the organisers, then they can send it, make it available to people who aren't here. I've got a couple of hands up. We are, we are ready into the tea break time. We're going to be back on the final panel at 3.30 back up there so we're into borrowed time but scott briefly and then you okay um could Brief. you take could you Eileen, could you take a message back to the labor party um because you've got to be very careful with who the labor party are right now you know they're, they're kind of like hedging the bets on europe and brexit and all that kind of stuff they're hedging the bets on on this uh you know balloting social housing well, I'm sorry, it's again, it's back to a bit like Henry Ford. The decision has been made by Labour councils. So either, um, either Corbyn uh, gets behind his Labour councils or the councils get behind Corbyn. But they've got to be called out on this. Because when I looked at one of these um, uh, uh, tenancy agreements, for when they were getting rid of people from a Guinness Trust in Brixton, the small print was that they wouldn't have 
they wouldn't have a, a direct right to be rehoused. There was very slippery language in the, in the bottom of the small print. Not a lot of people saw it, saw it. not even the unions saw it. And what I, what I fear here is that there's a bit of jiggery pokery going on uh, in order to get, uh, to get Labour through the next election. But we've got, to, we've got to call them to task on this. The Greens are steadfast that we want council homes to remain in council ownership and uh, re so for money to be reinvested for refurbishment of the state, yes. not regeneration. Yes. And Labour have got, got to, they've got to stop sitting on the fence and they've got to make up their minds who the hell they are. Okay. Sorry. Uh, and in the retro, just, um, your name. Uh, Gordon Hutchinson from Harrogate. The, um, the Labour part, Jeremy's um, perspective, um, I understand there, but, uh, but Jeremy made a step about housing, but uh, there was a big battle within the Labour Party there, um, and some, some members of the Shadow Cabinet tried to get that dropped, including John Healy, which is Labour Shadow. So a lot of our footage should be directed to him as well. It's John Healy, Labour, Labour Shadow of Housing. The other thing, you might want to look at the, um, the Tottenham CLP motion, which actually was um, incorporated into some of the speech. It's a council of Noah Tucker, basically. Have a look at that. Well, you should circulate it. So send it to Andrea, yeah. who's yeah. organised yeah. the day-to-day. Um, -day. So remember that name, John Healy. He's not on side with Jeremy. Okay. He's for social cleansing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where's that list that's supposed to be going last in there? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Can I, I mean, can I thank you, you're going to be up on the panel um, for this next week, so people will have a chance to ask more questions.